today we're going to only, the homework is only the threes, so we'll talk about the molecular mass determination and whatever the next thing is, I can't remember right offhand. Uh, but a lot of this will be some board work type work, um, and we'll, we will get to use PV equals NRT. Now, from this point on, and a lot of you did really well on the quiz. I was really pleased with uh, most of you and what you did on your quiz, and I'll give those back once the other 12 people take it. So, PV equals NRT, we'll revisit that. So we're going to talk about molecular mass determination. If you have your periodic table out, Get the periodic table out. You will need that unless you have it memorized, which I don't want you to memorize. All right. So somebody tell me real quick, what is molecular mass? Or how do you determine molecular mass from the good old days? In other words, say, if we were determining the molecular mass of, say, sodium chloride. Wait. Isn't that, like, really, is that really easy? Yeah. Don't you just add up the numbers? What numbers? The ones at the bottom. Um, for, again, again, my example is if I wanted to find the molecular mass for sodium chloride, what would I do? Add up the masses for sodium and chloride. And make sure that we write out the formula correctly, correct? Yeah, so there would be one sodium and one chlorine because it's a plus one minus one relationship. However, with these types of questions, we don't know what the formula is. So we can't just look at the periodic table and go, oh, there's four carbons and there's eight hydrogens. You can't do that. So what we get to do is we get to do some algebra. We get to use our favorite equation, PV equals NRT, and we'll rearrange it. However, when we look at the N here, what does N represent again here? Number of moles. And again, I don't know why they use N, but it's the number of moles. And the P is pressure, the V is volume, the R is the ideal gas constant, and T is temperature, which is always in what? Scale. Kelvin. Kelvin. I still I saw a couple people on the quiz that used degrees Celsius. Can't do that. So it's always got to be in Kelvin. So what we'll do is we can actually find out what the molecular mass is by changing what N is equal to. And I'll do this on the board. But N actually equals another equation, which is mass over molar mass. And that's what this equation here is. And I, I would give you something like this, but if we had these two switch places, N would be here, big M would be here. Now, big M represents molecular mass. Little m represents just mass. So if we have mass over molecular mass, we actually have our units as grams divided by grams divided by moles. Well, the grams cancel out, and then we take the inverse and the inverse, then we have moles. And that'll make a lot more sense when we do it on the board. So don't freak out yet. Um, but we'll do some examples here, and this shows the steps. And I'll do those practice problems on the board, and it should make a lot more sense. Density. What does density refer to again? Uh, density. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Nice. What are the units for density, typically? It's a... What's on top? Just generically speaking. It's a mass. And so we have mass over what? Uh, volume. volume, okay? And typically we'll use grams per liter, and liters are our volume here since we generally talk about liters for our PV equals NRT. So the volume uh, generally is in liters. So the volume, or I'm sorry, the density that we'll be using here is grams per liter. And I'll show you how to rearrange all that as well. This is a really short lecture, but the, the homework is the threes. So let's go ahead and turn the lights on. So on page number nine, I believe it is. Yeah. On page number nine, let's take a look at that. The first practice problem there at the bottom says, if 0.55 grams of a gas occupies two liters, or I'm sorry, 0.2 liters at 0 0.098 atmospheres and at 289 Kelvin, what is the molecular mass of the gas? So again, here's the things that I'll give you. I'll give you PV equals NRT. I will also give you this, which is little m over big M. And I know that a lot of you like to make lowercase letters for even capital letters, but be sure that you actually distinguish between the two so you don't personally mess up. So knowing that we have this, and again, the little m represents for mass, which is in what unit? grams. 
and molar mass, which is, ah, sorry, ah, that would have been right. Molecular mass, which is in the units of grams per mole. Okay. If we take grams, and I hate double division lines, okay, that's what we actually have. But if you follow the rules of only having one division line, we keep moles on the opposite side of the division line, we actually have this equation, I'm sorry, our formulas. What happens to the units of grams? They cancel out, so we're left with moles. So that's what this represents. So little m over big M, okay, actually let me scoot that over, little m over big M. So mass is in grams, molar mass is in grams per mole, but again, having just one division line, we actually have this set up so we do have our number of moles. Okay, so that's just clarifying how this is equal to that. So having these two equations, the question's asking for what again? Molecular mass. And again, using PV equals NRT, well, we don't see molecular mass in there. So what we'll do is we'll do substitution, little m over big M, RT. So what I've done is I've rewritten this equation to integrate this in there. Now, I'm actually looking for this variable right here for big M. Remember what I said last time okay, that we talked, or actually when we had our last lectures. Rearrange these variables before you start plugging numbers in. Don't cross multiply. So we want to arrange this so that the unknown variable, which is big M, is on one side, and all the other knowns are on the other side. So what we'll do is we'll multiply big M on both sides. So now we've got MPV equals little m RT. And then I'm going to divide PV on both sides. So now my equation looks like this. Okay. Once we have that, now we're ready to roll. Okay. So big M, which is grams per mole, and that's what our unit should be when we finish. It should be grams per mole, and every the words, everything should cancel out. Now we can plug things in. So it says that we have 0.55 grams. That's our mass. R, which R should we use in this problem? Good, the one that has atmosphere, so the 0.0821, and that's atmosphere, liter. I'm going to put the mole Kelvin on the opposite side. Okay, so mole Kelvin's on the opposite side. Temperature, it's already in Kelvin's, 289. Uh, the pressure, 0.968. And the volume, 0.2. Okay. Now, before you start plugging these numbers in on your calculator, ask yourself, what is your unit? What unit do I have remaining here? So let's cancel out any like terms. Well, atmospheres can go away. Kelvin can go away. Liter can go away. Is there anything else that can go away? No. And what are we left with? Grams per mole. So that tells you at least you have it set up correctly. So we know we have grams per mole, which is molecular mass. And then from there, let your calculator do the torque. Now make sure, because I'm still seeing this, multiply everything on top, hit your divided button, and open up the parentheses one time, type all that in, close the parentheses. I see a lot of people doing multiple. Anybody get 67.4? Yeah. Good. That's now. I may or may not ask you to identify that gas. Okay. If it's a single element, then okay. Or if it's a diatomic, okay. But if it's something that's like a compound, I won't do that to you. All right. So. Wait. Why do you put the mole K at the bottom? The what? Again, it's atmosphere liter per mole Kelvin. So this is one unit R. Is it always that number? Oh yeah. Oh, so that's a constant. So that that's a constant, right. Oh, okay. Oh, so you guys didn't watch the video. Oh. 8.31. Huh? So it's not always the same. You lie. Well, it depends on the unit. 
So if it feels that feel, it's eight point three. So the unit change. What about the? You have that. Yes. Let me emphasize. The key here is rearrange your variables before you start throwing any values in. Okay. That way you know. And listen to your units. Your units will tell you if you've got the right setup here. Grams per mole. That's molar mass. Or molecular mass. Okay. All right. Let's number two. Practice problem number two. Try that one on your own. Don't peek up here. Number two. Try that one on your own. And practice rearranging or plugging everything in and rearranging before. Now I know that. And cover up practice problem number one because you're just going to look at it. <laughs> Are you going to give us that constant? Number? You always have to have the constant, yeah. Like, do you write down on the desk? Uh, or is, that, is it on the back of our periodic It table? might be on the back of your periodic table. I'm not 100% sure. Somebody check. If it's not, I'll definitely give it to you. Yeah, yeah, it is on. Wait, what's it called? Yeah, the bottom left. Does it just say R equals, or does it have a fun number? Like, it has a great name. It's the ideal gas constant. I know, right? I hope so. I would feel bad if I didn't. Does everybody feel good about that? Yeah. Good. Let's do some densities now. Densities. We know that density from much, much earlier in the year is mass over volume. We talked about that earlier. But the units that we'll use for our mass and volume in this are grams per liter. Trust me, don't trouble trouble by changing liters to milliliters and then changing it to centimeters <coughs> cube. I'm not going to ask you to do that. It'll For gases, it'll always be in grams per liter. Now, we still may use this for um, densities because it will give us our small m, which in some cases will be this, which is mass over V. Okay. So the little m here still represents the mass, and the V represents the volume. Okay. So you still want to keep this in play, or it might be a chance to keep using that in play. So let's look at the practice problem on page 11. It says, calculate the density of hexane gas, and it's C6H14, in grams per liter at 35, now here we go, now we've got some conversions, at 35 degrees Celsius and 1.375 atmospheres. And it says on there, hint, do the molar mass first. So, we need to find out what our molecular mass is for our hexane, which is C6H14. How do I do that? You need to give us more space on this paper. Right small, yeah. What's that? Balance. We don't need to balance it. It's already good. You need to put 6 and then whatever C is, yeah. and then 14 and whatever C is. So what is carbon? 12.0. Nice. And then we have 14 hydrogens. Good. So 008. And that will equal our molecular mass. Now, we're not determining the molecular mass. We're determining the density, so we want to find this first. Is that 86? Point one, what? Point one seven two. Seven two. I like that. Okay, so that's grams per mole, and keep that unit intact. 
or in play. It's grams per mole. Not we have our molecular mass, which is equal to our big M. Okay. And so we need to rearrange it to get it to look like this. So let's go ahead, and you do want to write small here. We will substitute this in for N. So little m over big M, RT. Now we need to rearrange it so that we get these variables on one side. Since I already have the mass on top, I'm not going to move it to the other side. I'm going to leave mass here, and I'm going to move everybody else to the other side. So I need to multiply big M. So now I've got MPV to go little m, RT. Again, I want to keep big M on, or little m on top, so I'm going to divide RT on both sides. Oh my gosh. I know, I know. So now I've got this. Okay. And then what's my final step here? Slow down. <laughs> Divide the volume on both sides. Good. Because, again, I'm trying to go to this set up here. So, divide it on both sides. So, now I've got MP over RT. Put a little m over V. I know, right? So, again, what we're doing is we're just rearranging the variables. So, start off with PV equals NRT. Substitute for N. Now, we have this. We want to get the units here, I'm sorry, the variables mass over volume. Since mass is already on top, we don't want the inverse of these. So I'm going to get everybody that's not little m on their side. So multiply big M on both sides, divide RT on both sides. Then I have this, and then I'm going to divide volume on both sides. Okay. Once we have the equation down here, what is our Big M or our molecular mass. You found it. Yeah, actually, I'm going to it up here. So we have 86.172. And again, do include all your units. Okay. So it's grams per mole. Okay. Molecular mass is grams per mole. And then P, our pressure. What is our pressure? One point. 1.375 atmospheres, good. Um, which R should we use here? Okay, so we're gonna go 0 0.0821 atmosphere. I'm gonna put the liter mole, I'm sorry, liter mole Kelvin up here. Welcome back. And then the temperature, ooh. Gave you 35 degrees. 308 Kelvin. 308. Okay. So 308 Kelvin. All right. And let's find out what units cancel here. So can grams go away? No. Can atmospheres go away? Yeah. Yeah. Can moles go away? Who else? Kelvin. Kelvin. And that's it, right? So we have grams per liter, which is our the unit that we're looking for, density. And then let your calculator have some fun here. So in this sample of gas, our density is 4.69 grams per liter of gas. Okay. Cool. Try the last one on your own. Practice problem number two. Don't peek up here. Wait, Mary, why can't you hear? Do you not know at all? Do you have any ear Switch it up. Uh, I just sleep, I ever fall asleep. Exactly, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I got to do.
Which R should we use? Good. And a temperature. I already gave it to you, Kelvin. Dang it. I know. My bad. I promise, Beth, I won't do that to you on the test. Alright. So moles can go away. Atmospheres can go away. Kelvin can go away. At least our units are arranged correctly. So 1.26? Yes. Yes? No. All right, so the homework, the threes. 3A. Your temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. Your temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. And your... And the pressure is one atmosphere. That's what STP is. That's tomorrow's lecture, I believe. Pressure. pressure is one atmosphere. So that's what STP deals with. Zero degrees Celsius and one at one atmosphere of pressure. I can't. What problem is that? Three A.